I'm happy. I've long ago got past the, I don't want to say all of my advice <laughs> on social media, even my content, <laughs> anybody else's content. I'm good with it. Thank you. You know, Avery Smith, the data scientist, uh, runs his own boot camp. I did an interview with him. He, he paid me for an hour of my time, interviewed me. I talked about resumes and networking. He's used that one hour interview that I did with him for the past year for his boot camp students. Wow. All, all about it. That's fine. And a lot of them come to me and contact me. And then some of them have actually hired me to write their resume. So yeah, I'm, I'm good with it. I don't, if somebody's going to go out there and aggregate all of the things that I've said on social media and spend the <laughs> hours to do that, hey, awesome. You're probably better off saving your time, just paying me my fee and, yep. and I'll write your resume for you. But hey, if you, if you want to go find all the free content and put it together, all good. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy to give advice. Um, now I forgot what the question was. Anyway, that's what happens when you just talk for a living. Yeah. It, it's um, for advice for people on, on their, their resumes. Resume. Yeah. yeah. The number one thing I would say is make it easy to read and start with your value. If it's, if you have to cram it in, if you have space considerations where you're like, I got to have this and I got to have this and I got to have this, you've already lost you should make it readable, number one, have a, a logical flow and start with, where do you bring value? So many people with these crowded resumes, it's either on one hand, it's all technical skills and there's no readability to it. There's no summary, there's no introduction, there's no getting to know you, none of that. It's not personal. It's written for a robot. It's written for an applicant tracking system. So I have those on one extreme. And then on the other extreme, I have the people that are just writing flowery poetry. They have all of these adjectives. I'm a seasoned professional with 24 <laughs> years of... No, none of that sells you. You want to lead with your value. When a hiring manager is looking for an entry-level data analyst, what do they want to know? First of all, they want to know that you have the baseline technical skills. Mm -hmm. Second of all, they probably want to know if you have a year or two of experience, that's a bonus. Mm -hmm. A lot of the jobs will list that. And a lot of job seekers will get very put off by that and say, I can't get a job because I don't have any experience. Mm -hmm. You can kind of make experience, but that's a whole other question that we can get to. But people will get scared off because the job says I need three years of experience and I only have one. Mm -hmm. Apply anyway. Talk about your experience. I know plenty of people that have one year of experience or three years of experience, and that experience was garbage. They didn't do anything of note. They just punched yeah. a clock every day for three years. Yeah. I know tons of people that have six months or a year worth of experience, and that experience was intense and trained them well, and they should be able to work anywhere. The number is not generally what's important. It's the quality of the experience. You got all these people out there that are doing these sort of fake internships that's really just kind of a souped up online course where they're doing projects. And I know because I've done resumes for some of them. And when I start questioning things on the resume that look a little doubtful, they kind of sheepishly admit, yeah, it wasn't, that says it was an internship. It was an internship in name only. I wasn't actually an intern. It was kind of a project-based homework-like thing. Like, okay. And so we have to work on that from there. But there are plenty of people out there that are trumpeting their X years of experience and how much of that experience was valuable. Maybe not much. Mm -hmm. What you need to convey to a hiring manager is what's your value. If you have a year's worth of experience, explain why that was the greatest year any data analyst has ever had and why that makes you tremendously qualified to do this job, regardless of the numbers that are required. So convey your value up top, right up top from the summary. Talk about your technical skills, talk about your accomplishments, talk about your experience, and then talk about the place you want to work. Those are the four things I try to hit right away in the summary. Don't hit me with flowery adjectives. <laughs> Tell me why you're going to be a good hire. The company is hiring you to make them money, period. Yeah. That's it. Now, they, they want you to be a culture fit, because a toxic employee will cost them money. Mm -hmm. 
but that's the bottom line. You're trying to get on with a for-profit company. How do they stay in business? They make a profit. Mm -hmm. And that, and I'm convinced that those are the, the preponderance of the layoffs in tech are from the tech companies waking up and saying, this group of people over here does not make us money. Mm -hmm. For the last 20 years, we've allowed such things to take place, but eventually capitalism is undefeated and the, the non-profit makers get ushered out the door. It's not always the case. I don't want anybody, you know, <laughs> don't send me hate messages. If you just got laid off and you're like, I was the leading salesperson, I got it. <laughs> there are exceptions. Yeah. When I see these companies laying off, these companies that are profitable, Google, Microsoft, yeah. and they've laid off 5,000 people, they're not laying off 5,000 people because they want to lose money. They're laying off 5,000 people to make more money. So if you're not making a profit or your team or your division or something, maybe you're doing great, but your team is not a rainmaker team. Eventually the dollar wins out. This is so good because what you're doing is not just only build, only building, helping someone build their resume, but it's a mentorship. You're, you're like a mentor, actually. You're building the person up, you know? Yeah, you know, defining their values, you know, learning how to communicate, all of that is not just a resume, it's, it's a huge, it's a, lot, it's a full package. <laughs> yeah. And I put a lot of pride into it. I, I keep trying to calculate my hit rate. It's really good. I will tell you that. I, I am amazed at the number of people that maybe I only do a written review of their resume. I'm not even talking a full rewrite, just they send me their resume. I usually charge 20 or 30 bucks for it. It kind of fluctuates sometimes, but they send me their resume. Sometimes I'll even do it for free. Send me their resume. I write up, here's the five things you should fix. I hand it back to them. Two months later, they got a job. Wow. It's uncanny. And one of these days, I'll actually get down and, and break down the numbers and say, okay, here's my hit rate for rewrites. But when I, if you hire me to rewrite your resume, I'm invested, which is kind of funny because it's not. I don't really charge all that much money. There are definitely people out there that are getting way worse results than me that are charging twice as much as me for resumes. But even for the small sum that I charge to rewrite a resume, I'm invested. I connect with the people on LinkedIn. I mark our conversation every month or two. I'm hitting them up. Hey, how's it going? How's the job search? If they haven't got a job yet, I got a couple of people out there that I'm just might as well be my life's mission to make sure they get hired. And I, wow. I don't just restrict it to data analysts. I definitely get referrals from people and they say, well, I'm a project manager. Okay. I can probably work with that. Mm -hmm. I had a department head from Australia that hired wow. me. I had to go research how to write an Australian resume. They are totally <laughs> different. <laughs> now, now I kind of push back on, hey, if you're not in the United States or the UK, mm -hmm. I, I can't. Because I spent a lot of time on that guy's resume, way more than I should have for what I got paid. But, but it was a point of pride, and he got a job. 